to my Volkswagen Brasilia. And as you can see, it's looking a little bit different to what it was a second ago. And that's because I've decided to pull out all the stops and give this car some treatment that I think it deserves. We have already made a start on getting some bits and pieces off this thing. And as you can see, it is looking a little bit tired and worse for wear. The headlights out, the headlight surrounds are out, the badges, the bumpers, all the little bits and pieces of trim that were easy to come off have been removed. Now, these headlight surrounds have really revealed how rusty and cruddy it is up inside there. Also on the front, it's been hit, scraped and bumped so many times, so many filler cracks, that it's a big job that we're gonna to have to sort out. Now, if we come under the bonnet and have a little look under here, for those of you who have, who have followed us before, you'll know that this thing is sitting on air suspension. Now, when we put the air suspension in, these tubs were already welded in aftermarket, which is pretty cool. But we had to weld in the extensions on here to make the beam fit. And now, as I reflect on it, I don't think it looks that smart. I'd quite like to have this cut out and re-weld in an arch to make it look as one solid seamless wheel arch. Also, as a result of cutting that and welding them in, we had to make adjustments to this fuel tank to get the fuel tank to actually fit in this space. On this side, it's nice and smooth, but on this side, you have got a bit of a recess where it fits around that box section, which I don't like. I'd quite like to get that completely squared off and looking much nicer and to sort of sort out my OCD on that side, really. We also need to tidy up around here. A bit of fab work that I'd like to do. I know it seems silly doing all that work with the wheel arches and then covering it up but I'd quite like to fabricate a piece that goes all the way across here, covering the wheel arches. Almost making like a curve around the front there, covering up the wheel arches, covering up this recess here, and obviously covering up these lights around rear pieces. Same on that side, curve it all the way around here, making that nice and smooth, looking really fresh. Maybe able to re relocate the brake servo or the, um, fluid reservoir, get rid of that, make it look a bit cleaner. Get rid of these brackets where the fuel breather pipe sat, because when we did the fuel tank, we did modify the filler neck on the center of the tank here, and we did add a pressure release valve on there, so that got rid of the need of having the pipe across the back. This is the spare wheel well, or the hiding place for my socket. So I don't think we're gonna cover anything up here because we could probably do with putting a wheel in there for practicality, as I would like to drive this thing. But that'd be quite cool, just tidy that up under there. Paintwork on the bonnet is just patina. It isn't horrendous, but this car is an old car, don't forget. Moving on to this side, we have got the fuel filler flap, which can be welded up as it is now redundant, as you have that filler valve in there. You can't see it, but the hole inside the chassis in there for the filler neck needs welding up also. But again, the paintwork on here isn't actually horrendous, but this car has been painted about 10 times in someone's garage before. Coming along the windscreen seals then, that has gone all the way along here and looks really awful. Inside these drain valves, drain valves? Inside these drain vents on the scuttle panel, they're all rotten and rubbish, filled up the sealant, and they need addressing too. As we come round, I think I'm gonna do a aerial delete on this thing, get rid of that, and put a aftermarket radio in this thing that actually works without having an aerial on the wing there like that. Coming down, the wheel arches do need some dressing so you can't see it because the wheel's on but there is a little bit of rot and crud inside the wheel arch there which needs sorting out but as you can see on the bottom corner of that wing that's been pushed in dented that's rusty the doors like split a bit there not looking its best either apologies for the dirt in here it is a little bit messy i've been doing all sorts of bits and pieces trying to get the 
this uh, little den squared away. Whilst we're onto the, this side of the car, let's have a look at the wheels. Now, these are Porsche cookie cutters. I would like to get these polished, but they are so expensive to do that. So I'm gonna get them chrome powder coated, which I think will be really good. Ignore the necks and tires. They're gonna be replaced for some Toyo proxies. I've teamed up with Toyo and they're supplying us some 195 45 tires to get on here once we've got these wheels freshly powder coated. Moving up to the other side then, so they're the mirrors. I think that I'm gonna keep them. I did think about actually removing the mirrors and blanking them off completely, but I am gonna use this car, that is the plan, and mirrors would be helpful. Coming down to the rear quarter. The rear quarter isn't too bad on this again. As you can see, previous poor paintwork, but it just, it just needs sorting out. This trim along the bottom, I might do away with that. Get these holes welded up um, and just make them look a bit tidier. As you can see, rust and filler cracking on the door there. But then as we move round to the rear in this very cramped carport, you can see that I've made the start on the back of this thing as well, getting some of the bits and pieces off. So the rear lights have come out, the number plates are off, the rear number plate lights are off, the uh, vents up the top there have come out, and the exhaust and engine is yet to come out. I say the exhaust separately because it isn't actually properly fixed to the engine, but we'll get onto that later. The inside of this hatch here is a bit rotten, but nothing too horrendous. Now I say it's not horrendous because you haven't seen the tailgate. The tailgate on this thing is actually at my friend's shop and he's made a start on getting it welded up and it is absolutely worse for wear. It is in such a state I feel so sorry for him having to weld it up and trying to fix that. But the problem with that is we found when we took the rubber out of the wind or the window and the rubber out, we found that the rubber had shrunk and it allowed the ingress of water into the, into the boot and absolutely destroyed it. It was so rotten, well, <laughs> It's so rotten, there's hardly any metal left on the inside edge where the window goes and on the inside edge of the boot where it comes down to the rubber seal on the inside. But hopefully he'll get that welded up and that will look really good and get it painted or get it primed and then that's one panel finished, ticked off, so we can move on to another one. Moving on from the tailgate into the engine compartment, I would quite like to get the engine out of this thing, get it painted, get it all rebuilt up, nice, working really well. Obviously get the engine bay painted because it will go a different colour, so we'll have to do that. Get that all squared away, get it all nice. Come around to the other side then. We have got some rust on the quarter here that is starting to spread, that has spread for sure in my ownership. Get that sorted. Coming down to these vents here, I have got an idea. So on the buses, the split screen buses, you quite often see they weld like a bit of box section to encourage the air to come in this section here. And I think it'd be quite cool to have an air scoop on here, scooping the air into those vents to obviously help the engine. Again, tires are gonna be changed, the wheels are gonna be done um moving on to this door again not horrendous as you can see it's got an absolutely awful filler mosaic on the door there which needs sorting out getting back to bare metal and sorting properly and you can just see on the bottom of the door how much filler is on this thing but yeah that is the car pretty much bodywork wise in a nutshell it's gonna get rust repaired, all panels are gonna be done nice, and then we have a fresh coat of paint. But I just wanna reiterate a few things. I'm not a mechanic. I did do motorsport mechanics at college, but I'm not a mechanic. 
I don't really know how to weld. I don't know how really to do bodywork. And when it comes to air-cooled engines, I haven't got a Scooby either. I've never taken the body off of a chassis. And it's pretty safe to say I'm a bit nervous about doing as much of this work as I can by myself. But unfortunately, if you don't just go into the deep end and give it a go, you're never actually going to learn. And sometimes the best way to learn is getting knee deep in a situation and the only way to get out of it then is to learn, adapt, overcome and you'll finally get there. So we're going to try and do as much of the work on this as possible. I've bought myself an air compressor, albeit not a very good one, so I can get a sandblaster and prep as much of the prep there is on this car as possible. I've got sanders and bits and pieces like that which we can use. Now the plan for the car is just to get it stripped down panel at a time, get each panel off, rust repaired, done, finished, nice, in primer, so then we can move on to the body. Once the body is obviously all stripped out, we can make a start on getting that primed, sorted, ready to go, and then the whole car and body panels can be painted together. Obviously, I have said I want to separate the body from the chassis, and to do that, it's going to allow us to get the engine out, piece of cake, go round the chassis, sort anything out on that where it needs sorting out, get all the cables and bits and pieces straight, nice and sorted, and I'm probably going to wrap the, the top and the bottom side of the chassis as well, because my plan is to drive this thing. But with all them negatives aside, we need to start stripping some of the parts down on this thing. Now, I'm going to start with the passenger side wing because I can take that to a friend of mine for them to weld it up. So we'll get some tools and we'll crack on getting the wing stripped off this thing. I just wanted to use this time just to reflect on how epic the Brasilia really is. I've owned this car coming up two years in July and I've only ever driven it once. The car has traveled approximately 2,300 miles in my ownership but it's probably only done three or five of them on a main road under its own power and I want to change that. I want to use this car for what it was made for. I want to be able to jump in it in a sunny summer's afternoon, go for a drive down the coast, grab an ice cream and just enjoy it for what it was made for. I want to be able to jump in it and drive to car shows, albeit sun might be too far, but I want to rename the thing from being called a trailer queen to an awesome driver. Now we aren't going to be able to get this thing on the road without doing all this work on the engine, gearbox, making sure it's all tip top and reliable. The paint is just an extra really, but how cool would that be to have a complete package, an absolute head turner. Getting the wing off was quite tricky because the bolts did not want to come undone. I had to use the recip saw and the impact gun along with conventional tools to get this thing off. All I have to do now is, I think as I've got one side off, I'm going to get the other side off so it looks symmetrical. But we're going to crack on, get that done off the camera and we'll regroup once we have both wings off. Both wings are off the Brasilia and the second wing was an absolute ball lake. I had to get the recip saw out and cut pretty much all the bolts out to get that side removed. But let's have a look. So there is the passenger side and there is the driver's side. As you can see, the wings were covering up a little bit of a gremlin. There's rust here. It's a bit tacky. You can see the airbag poking through there. And look at this. This is just thick with filler hiding gremlins. It's a little bit holy down here. 
but I will be honest, it is more solid than I thought it would be. So I can't complain too much there, but there is a lot of underseal covering up potential rust and issues on this thing. Come back to this side, there's a bit of a hole there around this bracket. It is a bit bubbly and a bit tatty. Again, a bit of rust here. But all in all, it isn't horrendous. It is a little bit rubbish along there. Airbag is poking out, as you can see. The Everesto four inch narrowed beam with the Zenith shock airbags. And those tires are absolutely toast. But all in all, not a bad little bit of progress. With the wings now being off, I can get them sent over to a friend of mine where he can do some welding, get that uh, aerial delete done, get the fuel flap delete done, and see if he can do any of the other little bits and pieces that welding on there that need to be done. Ideally, we need to get them sandblasted, get the paint removed off them, so we can see if there's anything else that needs welding. But for the time being, he can do those small areas. Now, I just wanted to say something. We're gonna do a series on the Brasilia, getting this thing show ready on the YouTube channel with you guys, and I'm gonna do it a little bit different to how I've done the other videos. All the other videos are really edited, it takes so much time to edit, film, and create them, but with the Brasilia series, we're gonna keep it KISS. Now, what do I mean by that? Keep it simple, stupid. We're just gonna pick the camera up, you and I and the Brasilia are just gonna get on with it, get whatever it is that needs doing done, and you're just gonna be here for the ride. Now, we've got so much to do on this thing. Like I've said before, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know how to paint, I don't know how to weld, I don't know how to do engine stuff, I'm not a mechanic, but like Matt Armstrong says, hard work beats talent and you aren't gonna learn unless you jump in the deep end and give it a go. But if you are enjoying this video and you have enjoyed other videos on the channel and you can't wait to see more from what we have to offer, make sure you hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, hit that bell icon and make sure you stay tuned because there's plenty more of this to come. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching this video and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.